Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you my version of the Kingway alignment tool. So the Kingway tool is basically just a modular version of the different tools that are shown in the, the Conley book on machine tool reconditioning. And it was invented by Herman King, who is the father of Richard King, that people know from the, the Richard King scraping classes. And you know, he had a patent on this, I think, back in the 1950s, but uh, that patent has long since expired. So I don't think Richard is making these, these uh, tools anymore, and there's very few of them on the used market. But they're pretty simple, so I decided just to make my own. And I made a few uh, variations from the original Kingway tool, and I'll cover those in detail. Uh, I don't have a lot of video about machining these parts. These are all pretty simple parts. Uh, you don't even really need a milling machine to make this tool. Uh, you can do most of this work with just a drill press. But I do have some uh, footage of machining these, these curved parts here using my CNC mill. Uh, but I will show you how the tool is assembled and I think from the assembly you'll get a pretty good idea of how, how it's designed and if you want to replicate it, I don't think it would be very hard for you to do so.
Okay, this is the completed tool minus the level vials. I'm going to cover mounting the precision level vials in a second video, but this is the alignment portion of the tool basically completed. And I've never actually seen a Kingway tool in person, but I've studied a lot of pictures. And I'll tell you the kind of the highlights of what makes this tool different from the actual Kingway. So the biggest difference has to do with this this foot right here. I think on the Kingway they call it like a tubular rest or something like that. Anyway, it's typically made out of a piece of steel tubing and then they slit the tubing down the middle and grind a, a radius on each side of the slit. So basically the, the tube it can either be like this up and down or I think there's like a 135 degree angle and then a, maybe a 90 degree angle so it only has three positions and the spacing between the the legs of the of the the tube are basically fixed so the width of the slot is fixed you can't change it now my feeling was that that's an extremely complicated part to make I think that the tube is is hardened and ground and I don't have a very good way to grind an OD or or harden a piece of material or to radius the the sides of the slot so I eliminated the tube entirely and went with the setup that you see here. So what this is, that's a piece of 3 8 diameter, uh, approximately 10 millimeter diameter, TGP steel, so turn ground polished. So it has a very precise OD. And then I drilled and tapped it quarter 20 on each end. And on each end I installed a hardened drill bushing. So these are ready-made bushings that you can buy and they're just hard as a coffin nail and I just you know installed those with some red Loctite that's all it takes to hold those in place and then you know they're mounted to these curved arms so basically I can I can rotate them or change the spread or I can actually reverse them and kinda cross their legs so that I can reach into some some weird positions the other thing that's different about this tool from the Kingway is on the clamps. So on the Kingway the clamps are made from cast bronze I think and they basically have to have two knobs so in my design one knob clamps both rods and I don't know if that's really better but it's a little bit simpler and uh, you do have to be kind of careful when you when you loosen the knob because the whole thing basically can let go and these are just made from some uh, you know mild steel I think it's inch and a half by inch and a half square and the rods are three quarters diameter or 19 millimeters and the rods are just a 1045 TGP they're not hardened they're just mild steel so the other thing that's different is is with this swivel foot down here so on the Kingway they have the ball like this but the the there's a ring like a plastic ring that mounts onto the ball and it's a separate piece and I didn't think that was a very good idea because, you know, the tendency for that ring to be lost is pretty high. So I basically just used a piece of, of 4140 pre-hardened material. It's like Rockwell 30, Rockwell 35. So it's fairly hard, but it's still machinable. And that way I didn't have to do any heat treating after the part was machined. So it's just machined with a 45 degree bevel on the bottom that the, the ball fits into and the ball is just welded to this steel rod. So the last thing that's different is the indicator arm here. So I know on the Kingway they have some special types of clamps and they basically just use like a long I don't know 7 16 or 3 8 rod with a different clamp or whatever for the indicator. I just bought an off-the-shelf Noga articulating arm and I think that's going to allow me a lot more flexibility as far as mounting the indicator. Okay, I've got the tool set up on my engine lathe and I'll show you how it's useful in this configuration. So the tool follows the standard work holding practice of uh, 3 two, one constraints, meaning that it has three points of contact vertically, one, two, three, and then it has two points of contact horizontally, which is these two right here because they're straddling the V way and it skips the one because we want the tool to be able to move horizontally along the ways so if you're not familiar with the 3 two, one concept look it up on online there's lots of good information about that anytime you're doing work holding that's the 
principle that you follow. You set the part down on three points, constrain it against two work stops, and then slide it against one more stop, and it's not over constrained. Anyway, what we're doing here is comparing the carriage ways or the bed ways to the tailstock ways to see if they are parallel. And if we're going to be rebuilding this machine, ultimately we would want all of the ways to be parallel. And the way that we can test that is by using this tool. So basically, all I have to do is just slide the tool along and keep an eye on the indicator. Nothing to it. So typically on an engine lathe, the first step would involve leveling, so we would use the level vials, but I don't have those installed just yet. So one of the major advantages of the design of this adjustable foot here is that I can actually adjust the contact points on this foot to reach an unworn portion of the bedways. So typically when you see a worn engine lathe, it's just going to be worn in a groove in the middle of the ways. And if you can actually reach the very outside of the ways, you'll find that they're not worn at all. And that's kind of like a factory reference surface. And if you can reach out to that factory reference surface, it's a very convenient way to bring the machine back to its original spec. With the, with the true Kingway design, you're basically limited to wherever the tube contacts the ways. With my design, it's fully adjustable, so I can reach any of the unworn portion that I want to. All right, here's a typical setup for checking dovetail ways. So I've got the tool set up on the top of the knee of my Lagoon FTV2 milling machine. And you can see I went ahead and inverted the legs on this adjustable rest here. So now I'm getting contact on both bearing surfaces of the dovetail. And then the swivel foot rides on the other bearing surface and I can compare the fourth surface using my indicator. So all I gotta do is just slide the the tool along and I can compare how parallel the dovetail ways are to each other and it's a little bit more convenient than using you know dowel pins and measuring across them and then also I can use this setup to check for twist in the ways using the level vial when I get that mounted okay guys thanks for watching hopefully next time we will discuss uh, selecting and mounting the precision level vials to use with this tool and then I think we can look forward to using this tool to rebuild some of these machines. Should be a little bit more convenient than the than the methods that I was using before.